Hello and welcome to another tutorial in the series on working with Redux and React. Today we'll be covering a couple of new topics. We'll be covering asynchronous actions and middleware. So let's get into it. Hi. Um, so last time we covered uh, basically connecting Redux with React or the view layer and that it's pretty simple and it's not too difficult to do and um, we got through our basic to-do list. Today, we're gonna hook up our application to the actual uh, service that um, we're gonna be using as a backend for our front end. So asynchronous actions and action creators. Um, in fact, there are no async actions. Remember, actions are just JavaScript objects um, that we return with data and that reducers use to figure out what needs to be changed in the state. Um, the async Action creators are basically action creators that use middleware or another solution to dispatch um, other action creators or return, well, yeah, to dispatch other action creators uh, that return the plain JavaScript objects. The basic solution or the, the canon solution that you see in the documentation is called, uh, is called Thunk Redux. And I'm going to go ahead and double check if it's Redux Thunk or Thunk Redux, but that's the name of the middleware, it's Thunk. Uh, I'm not sure where that came from, and I'll be honest, I don't know what it means. <laughs> so let me see real quick if it's Thunk Redux or Redux Thunk. It's Redux Thunk. Okay, so I messed up a little bit there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be covering is uh, middleware. So middleware is basically a, a, a JavaScript function that intercepts state updates and allows you to modify state modify state um, or do any kind of side effect um, and they're very simple to build and we're going to be building a custom middleware that allows us to tell the application if we're logged in or not uh, that's pretty much it actually now that i think about it you can't uh, update the state but you can read it and do any kind of a side effect um, that you cannot usually have in a uh, in a reducer. So let's get to this. So this is what we were left with last time. Um, let me go ahead and just pull up actions. We built a very simple uh, application that uses static data or uh, a static initial state. This little uh, array over here and um, we split that up out by uh, the array of tasks over here that we split out by dailies, by habits, by to-dos, and we can check these off and finish these. We can't unfinish them, which is actually on purpose because, uh, well, in um, uh, the, since this is a front for habit RPG, um, I just didn't want to deal with having to have an extra action to uncomplete a to-do since that would be a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial. It's just it's just extra functionality that you know it's there's no reason to cover it in the tutorial. It works the same way as completion. But we're also able to add new tasks. So walk up the stairs. I don't know, uh, push commit to GitHub. You know, uh, we can add new tasks, stuff like that. But when you refresh it goes back to what it was. What we want to do today is replace, replace this with an actual call to an API. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Um, we'll be using Thunk, as I said. So we're going to have to install it. I'm going to go ahead and do that in a little bit. But we'll go ahead and import it. And as before, I'm going to be referring to my other screen um, for uh, the code. Um, I can go ahead and live code this from scratch but i think it's always good to have um uh, what do you call it some kind of reference because then i'm not going to spend half an hour trying to find the the right stuff in the documentation um so we're also going to need apply middleware apply middleware is just a function that allows you to add middleware and uh this is going to be the second argument for creating a store. So, like middleware. And 
That should be it. So we should have Thunk middleware now as part of the state, and we can go ahead and use it. Now what it allows us to do is something very interesting. So I'm just going to pull the code real quick. We can go ahead and go back to our actions. Let me just zoom in. Um, I didn't do that for the last file. Let me just, I'm going to go ahead and go back, zoom in. And yeah, we added the middle apply middleware over here, thank middleware over here, and added it to our uh, create store um, constructor. Or I guess we passed it in. Oops. Actions. All right. So what we'll need to be doing is actually well, no, actually action types are fine. So we're gonna go ahead and just skip the tasks over here, and this will make this an invalid action. So we're going to convert this get tasks um, action uh, creator into uh, an asynchronous action creator. I'm going to keep what's on the bottom over there just for reference. Uh, no, I changed my mind. We're going to go ahead and create a new action creator just to avoid confusion called fetch tasks. Now, um, fetch task is gonna is gonna fetch our tasks, get them for wherever we need them, and then it's gonna dispatch an action with get tasks that's gonna actually have our tasks. Um, it may seem like a little bit of indirection, but if since it's asynchronous, it's difficult to just um, basically return a task. So it's it's a, it's a little bit easier to do a little bit of like a callback that gets the actual tasks. So Thunk will automatically um, check and find out if you're passing in a function instead of an object and basically figure out that, hey, you know, you're actually using an asynchronous action instead of uh, a synchronous uh, or an asynchronous action creator instead of synchronous, synchronous action creator. And we're going to want to use um, something to get the information. So we're going to use fetch from isomorphic. Again, I don't think we have this one installed. So we have a couple of, let me just go ahead and install these from the shell. We're gonna do uh, npm, oops, npm install, what did I say? Thunk Redux or Redux Thunk? I can't remember. Redux Thunk, okay. Redux thunk and isomorphic fetch, save. This is going to get it installed, so we don't have to watch that. Um, okay. So, we're going to go ahead and return oh, our promise, which is going to be this. Actually, it, needs to, it doesn't have to be an interpolated string, it's just yes. Com. User tasks. We have to then specify headers. And now um, we're gonna go ahead and use an API key, API keys that I saved here in in a config file. So we're gonna go ahead and import those. You know what? I don't remember what they look like, so. So I need actually two tokens to be able to fetch data for a user. Um, let me just make this bigger. Let me go ahead and just split the screen. Oh. The reason I'm actually showing you guys this, this, this ID, these are all secret, uh, secret tokens and live tokens, um, but I'm going to be deleting that account as soon as I'm done with this tutorial so that uh, so that I can, you know, it, it doesn't get maliciously used. And it looks like my video went out of um, focus, so let me just go ahead and fix that. Wait, uh, video capture device. Oh, there we go. Properties. Sometimes that happens. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I need to update something or the other. And good, we're good. So let me go ahead and fetch that. We have these two keys. Um, and I'm not going to go over the Habitica API, just trust me that you just do x api, uh, API user 
that's one of the headers, and that's going to be our UUID. We also need an X API key. And that's going to be our API token. So that's cool. So we're fetching this. And uh, we're just going to do that. We're going to get the response. We're going to return the response.json. And then we're going to do another then. And this is going to be our JSON or JSON, however you want to pronounce it. I kind of switch between the two. Ooh, what did I do here? Not enough indentation. And we're going to go ahead and dispatch our get tasks. Um, or let's call it receive tasks. I don't think it makes sense to do get tasks. We're going to dispatch our receive tasks um, action creator. Because we're not getting them, we're actually just receiving them right now. Um, and then we're going to dispatch it with the press one in JSON. Did I not spell that right? Oh. Oops. Which one is the right spelling? Is it IE or EI? I feel like it's EI. Alright, so that's kinda that's pretty much it. So this is your asynchronous action creator. Um, the reason I say it's an action creator, you can see that it's not returning any JS uh, any JavaScript object. It's returning a promise that upon fulfilling dispatches another action. So in a way, it's kind of like um, a utility function that fetches everything we need it to do, and then it actually dispatches the action creator. Um, it makes me want to say that this is not an action creator, that this is just the utility function in the end. But a good way to think about it is that, that it's an action. Cool. So we'll be fetching that stuff and uh, passing it in, and everything should work as before. Um, now, I did change receive. Uh, or get tasks get tasks to receive tasks. So let's go ahead and update that. Receive tasks. Again, receive tasks. But it, yeah, that this should actually do all of our work. Um, we prepared pretty well for all of this. So let's see what happens. Let's open up our shell. I'm going to go ahead and run gulp. You may have noticed from the last video that I've changed the shell that I'm using. Beforehand, I was using the Emacs shell, uh, which is kind of like bash, but not really. Uh, what I'm using now is actually um, PowerShell, which is a Windows shell, um, or a Windows command terminal, that isn't, um, it's not the command line, it's not CMD. It's like the, the new thing that people have been using. Hmm, something happened. What happened? Some kind of an error. Let's figure out what it is. Maybe I forgot something. Get tasks is not a function. Ooh, that is because we are not using the right thing. Okay, so in our view, if you remember, telling me I forgot this. In our view, we're using get tasks, and since that doesn't exist anymore, it's not gonna work. So let's change that to receive tasks. And it should work as described. It's kind of strange. I figured that Webpack would give me an error that the receive tasks doesn't exist. Rosecify does it. I wonder why Webpack doesn't. Filter on F undefined. All right. Have it. Okay, uh, I guess a little bit of debugging is in order. So let's go ahead and just log out our JSON. We are, oh, you know what, we don't need to log it out. We can just look at our network request. Uh, ooh, you know what, we do not have initial state somewhere. 
I wonder if that's what the issue is. This is. No, we do have the initial state here. It's just not getting sent. Strange. Mm, it would have shown up. Yeah, okay, so I wasn't expecting to do a little bit of debugging, but yeah, it happens. It's, I'm guessing that there's a place somewhere um, where uh, I think it's the initial state that's not getting passed correctly. Initial state tasks, yeah. That's bizarre. <sighs> well, the filter is getting run over here, so let's just console log out state current state. I guess it's kind of cool to show a little bit of debugging. You know, I'm very much about a console log debugging. Um, so it started with... Huh. Why is that not working? So it actually started with the empty state and then it changed to an undefined state. So I'm thinking that somewhere along the line over here I messed up with the action creator. Let's see if this gets better. Now I could have obviously set up breakpoints and stuff like that, but I think this shouldn't be too big of a deal. So this doesn't get run. Uh, so why is it undefined? Why is it undefined? Why is it defined and then undefined? What could have happened during that time? Buying everything? Bizarre. Maybe this will tell us what happened in life cycle. So normally you would use like Redux dev tools and they would give you an idea of what's happening. So on initialization it's empty. Then receive tasks comes back with empty. Why is there a space? No, it shouldn't be a space, it should be an underscore. Uh, maybe this underscore is there and I can't see it. What's going on here? I'm getting a payload. There shouldn't be a payload for it. Oh, it's not receive tasks, it's fetch tasks. Okay, so this happens sometimes, you know, a little bit of a confusion. I'm sorry about that. So what I basically did was on component mount, instead of uh, actually getting the, the real tasks and fetching them, I went ahead and ran the receive tasks um, action creator, which doesn't actually get the tasks for us. It passes them into the reducers. So a little bit of a hiccup here. Still getting an issue. Alright. So let's look at our tasks. Maybe I messed up in some way here. Ooh. Yeah, alright. Doesn't pass 
that's one of the token. Filter is not a function. Yeah, maybe I'm calling it somewhere else. JSON. Oh. Ooh. All right. So it's not response that JSON. It's response that JSON function. So what I was passing in was actually a function. Man, I gotta, I gotta get better at this coding on screen thing. But you know, you can see that it's not too difficult to debug at these type of applications. Um, I do wish I had the, the dev tools working, but I really wanted to make sure that you guys don't, um, don't have to use all that extra functionality just to get a simple application up and running. All right, so now it should, all of it should work, and it's working. Cool. So I do have, this is not an error. I actually did add a bunch of empty tasks. You know what, why don't we go ahead and log into Habitica? And you guys can see what um, the actual to-do list looks like. That way I'll give you a good idea of uh, what we're building as a front end. We're gonna do my email. I don't remember the password. Nope. Okay. So this, uh, this is what the uh, uh, new quest, that's great. So this is what Habitica looks like. Oops, I'm dying over here. Do I have some gold? I don't have enough gold. Crap. Let's just finish a couple of these. I have grown. And fine. All right. So there's a bunch of empty tasks over here. You can see there's a bunch of tasks over here. These are the habits. These are the dailies. These are the to-dos. So this is like what we just want this part of the application built out um, in our uh, Redux application. And as you can see, we are building that out. And these are already finished. So it actually fetches the current state of these tasks. And some of these are finished too. Cool, right? So it's actually working. All of it is working currently. Um, just a few lines of code to enable asynchronous actions. Whoops. And that was it. Uh, obviously I had all this stuff prepared, but you know, I think we're 22, 23 minutes into the video and because of a couple of small mistakes that I've made, I think it's 10 minutes longer than it needed to be. But you know, this is very, very simple to just add asynchronous functionality. We're going to do one more thing just to clean things up a little bit. Um, we're going to go ahead and filter. We're going to go ahead and touch the to-dos. So once the to-dos are done, it's usually... Um, it's usually customary to not show them in the list. So right now they show up, but in Habitica, they don't show up. You can see, right? No? Well, I guess they're not visible here. Cool. They're automatically archived. So we're basically viewing archived action or uh, archived to-dos. And we don't need to see those. We just need to see the current to-dos. So you can see three here. Um, and we have three active tasks over here. Cool. So how does Redux Thunk work? I'm going to go ahead and just pull up the code. Because somebody recently tweeted out the code for Redux Thunk. And it was like five lines of code. And I was like, there's no way. It's just five lines of code. So let's go check it out real quick. And it is. This is the middleware. We're getting our state. We're getting the dispatch method. And we're basically... This gets a little bit confusing with that. Uh, do they have a build of that? No. This is basically a function wrapped in another function. So what we're basically doing is... Uh, well, do, the, do we have... No module learning showing up for us. All right, well, well I'm gonna go check that out. But it's a function wrapped in another function. We can go ahead and just uh, 
Let's see. I think my Emacs has kind of had a brain fart. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Let's pull up Redux Thunk after it's been compiled. No, it's not showing up. Oh, it's a webpack require three cents. Oh, crap. Uh, okay, let's do Thunk middleware. So there we go. Okay, so we're just getting dispatch. We're getting get state. We are returning a function with uh, with the argument next. So the apply middleware um, function that we get from Redux will pass in a next function so that we can go ahead and keep passing middleware in. Um, and once it does that, we return another function um, with the action in there. And uh, we check, you know, is action a function? And if it's if it is a function, go ahead and pass in dispatch and get state. If it's not, just pass it along. So this way we go through all of the different actions that are available to us. Um, or, yeah, we go through the action that's available to us. Um, so whenever an action gets dispatched, uh, this thunk middleware is, gets run. It'll tell us, you know, hey, there's a function. There, Sorry, there's an action. If the action is a function, we go ahead and just uh, run it with dispatch. If it's not a function, we go ahead and just pass it along to the next middleware. So it's a nice intercept. Cool. And I said we were gonna we were gonna build our own middleware, and I wasn't lying. We're gonna go ahead and build something similar to this. But again, this is so simple. I mean, look at how simple it is to build this middleware. It's crazy. What's kind of funny is that he's using ES6 or ES2015 uh, arrow functions, but he's using module that exports. So that's kind of funny, but whatever. Uh, what I want to do is instead of us having to refer to this static config file, I want to be I want to allow anybody to log in. Uh, to do that, it's a little bit more complicated. We're gonna go ahead and just do login. Mm, it's not a login middleware. Let's do the login first. Export constant uh, login, uh, and it's gonna be this. We're gonna go ahead and just add export that function. Login, uh, authentication tokens, or authentication. We're gonna return our action. And type is login, payload is authentication. And we're not gonna do anything crazy in the reducers. Um, we just need to add login as one of the actions that we can handle, and we're going to do case login. Then we're going to do return uh, object and sign. Again, we're copying we're copying the initial state, and we're going to go ahead and do what was it called? Authentication. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just store this in authentication, and we're going to do action payload dot authentication. So we were basically just storing the authentication information. Um, nothing crazy. Um, let's create a logout as well. And this is going to show you a practical example of what to, why we would need to use uh, middleware. Or what we can use middleware for. So we need a logout. And logout is not going to have a payload. It's just going to be type logout because there's no reason to have a payload. Why, why would we need to have a payload? It just means we need to overwrite the authentication um, object with an empty. Well, why don't we just do that? We're going to have authentication, but this, this time it's going to be empty. It's going to be just a UID. And we're going to rewrite this as well. Authentication. Um, just so that um, our application doesn't have to be aware of what the state looks like, what the state um, format is, we're just gonna pass in a UID and a token. Um, I think we call it API token uh, uh, up in the fetch tasks. So we're just gonna have the UID. We have API token. 
and here we're going to have an empty. And it is an empty. Cool. I think that's a good way of approaching it. Of course, we could have the reducer uh, handle it as well. I think that's kind of a matter of how you want to structure your application. Do you want the reducer to be uh, to go ahead and just overwrite that object, or do you want? Um, oh. oh, we don't need break. Anyway. Or do you want the action to go ahead and handle that? Well, since we're having. Let's just do that. That's fine. Hmm. Now, we will need to um, get our authentication information from the state um, for our fetch tasks instead of from this config file. So we're going to go ahead and delete the config file. We're going to go ahead and just do get state. So that's the second argument that gets passed in in the thunk middleware. Um, you get not only dispatch, but you also get uh, get state. And that's going to be... I'm going to go ahead and get the state. Let state equals get state. And then we're going to have uh, state dot authentication. ID. Okay, so we were able to we we're actually able to access the state from fetch tasks, and again, this is what um, what distinguishes it from a regular action creator. We're able to get the state and change the action or change what we're doing uh, before dispatching the action uh, based on that state. So it's a little it's a little bit different with that. Cool. We're gonna have to change our application a little bit as well. So, and this is, this is like the messy part that I don't really like working on, to be honest. But we're going to need to do a, uh, let's see, let's, do we need to create, do we want to create a new component? We might want to create a new component. Do we want to do that? Mm, I think we're going to have to. <sighs> I didn't want to do that. Yeah, it'll make it easier. Um, the other thing is, if we don't have that data, if there is no state of authentication, which is possible, or there's no, st well, let's see, state that authentication that UUID length is equal to zero, or state that authentication dot API token the length is equal to zero. Basically, if we're not logged in. We're going to go ahead and just return. But we don't need to do anything. And this should basically just uh, run through. Actually, we're going to just do a no op function so that we have a consistent function of return. So, yeah, um, that's what we're going to do. If you try to fetch a fetch task and uh, they're actually, you don't have the login information, we're just going to return empty. I think that's pretty reasonable. And uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new nav.js file, and that's going to be our navigation component. So instead of... Uh... Crap, what was I doing? So we're gonna have to we're gonna create a uh, a React component that'll allow us to log in, right? So we're gonna have React. Oops. Let's make this bigger. Component from React. We're gonna connect from React Redux. Do we need to? Yeah, we do. Uh, we're gonna get that authentic the authentication. Do we have an authentication action? We have that login. That's right. We're going to get um, login. We're going to get log out. And we're also going to get fetch tasks from actions. Uh, it's going to be class navigation extends component. So 
let's just do our boil boiler plate real quick. Caps. Super. Caps. Um, and then we're gonna do update authentication. API token. Let's keep it consistent. UID API token. So this is gonna be our action. Uh, our um, method to basically go ahead and dispatch our login. I have this pre-written. You know what, Let, if I, since I have it pre-written, let's just skip it and we'll get to it later. So we'll have a render and what we're gonna render is gonna be... Uh, just, we're gonna keep this simple again. So we're gonna go ahead and render We'll get there later as well. Let's do the connector. Export default connect. We're gonna create a new select function and navigation. Oops. Let's do function select state. Now we don't really care about anything other than the um, authentication information. Basically, we want to know if we're uh, logged in or not. Uh, let's do that. Let's do. Left logged in. It's false. If state the authentication and state the authentication that API token is bigger than zero and state that authentication dot UID of like this is bigger than zero logged in that's true and you, we could probably do this much cleaner but you know what this works and that's it we don't need anything else for the state we just need to be able to tell if we're logged in or not so logged in and again as you can see um using the select function we don't need to use the entire state in this component would it, all we need to do is uh, convert some of this data from the state uh, into the data that we actually need. We just need to know, are we logged in? Are we not logged in? So let's uh, let's create an element. Let's do display authentic authentication. Remember, J JSX is not a, um, what do you call it? Um, it's not a templating language. It, it just converts whatever you write into a function to this like tree. So we're gonna do, are we locked in? If we're locked in, if we're locked in, we don't need to show anything. So let's just do an empty div. If we're not logged in, that's when we need to show a couple of input boxes. We'll do an input type text equals, uh, let's do, And what we want to do is uh, whenever this gets updated, our API key is going to be equal to it. Placeholder. Sorry, API token. Um, in my older application, I called it API key. So that gets a little bit confusing. Cool. API token. So our users know what to enter. We're going to go ahead and copy this over. We're going to do a uh, UU. ID. It's gonna be ID. Um, and then we're gonna do it like an on click. So on click. Oh, and remember with uh, React, you have to have only a single element returning, or like you have to have a parent wrapper. Um, we're not gonna use the event for anything. We don't care about the event. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have to update the authentication somehow. So we're going to do update authentication. You know what, why don't we just dispatch? We'll just dispatch straight from here. We're going to dispatch login and we're going to do API token dot value. UUID dot value. No, wait. We hit the UUID dot value first. API token dot value second. Login and end. 
let me make this into a little bit larger so, so it doesn't wrap. So basically, if we're if we're logged in, there's no reason for us to see um, any of the login information. So we just pass in a div. If we're not logged in, oh, I guess we didn't import dispatch. If we're not logged in, we want to make sure that the login uh, form shows up. We're going to do one more thing, and that's going to be log out. Display log out. And sorry for the snoring in the background. <laughs> it's my dogs. Um, and so this is going to be the opposite of that. So when we are logged in, we're going to go ahead and show, one click, this, and we're going to go ahead and just dispatch log out. When we are logged in, we're just going to have a, an empty A element. That's okay. Whatever it is. Cool. Again, when we're logged in, authentication form, when we're, and, uh, um, sorry, when we're logged in, empty div, and a logout button, we're logged out, logout form, and nothing else. We're going to wrap all of this in div, and we're going to go ahead and just display these. Uh, let's import that entire application. Navigation. Um, the sounds in the background are my dog snoring. Did I already mention that? I, whenever I'm doing these videos alone, I'm not. I don't have any video or any chat on. I keep. I forget basically uh, that I I might have somebody or that I repeated something, and so we just want to go ahead and just display the navigation. Now, here's the thing. Um, we're fetching tasks here on component dead mount. And this doesn't make sense right now, but once we apply our middleware, it'll make sense. Right now, it's basically fetching it, and the fetch function will say, hey, dude, you don't know, you know any of the login information. Can't give you anything. Uh, with nav, when we dispatch a login, it just logs you in. But it doesn't give you the... the um, it doesn't actually fetch the new tasks upon login, which is what I'm wanting to do. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, abstract this out on into a method, just because in line it would be a lot. And we're going to call it, what, handle login, handle login, handle login, EUID, API token. We're going to go ahead and click dispatch from the step props. This is going to be all of a sudden. And we'll log in. We're going to get dispatch. Um, we're going to go ahead and log us in. Dispatch. Oh, this would be this dot handle login. Sorry. This dot handle login. Is that working? Yeah, that should be right. We're going to go ahead and dispatch a login action. So that's going to be login, UUID, API token. And since this is a synchronous action, we can go ahead and just dispatch right after that, fetch tasks. Cool. So basically, hey guys, we're logged in, fetch tasks. Um, if the login information is wrong, fetch tasks will fail. We don't have an action for that. That's fine right now. Um, but if the user just passed an empty and clicked login by accident, it's not going to do anything. Cool. Let me add a semicolon here. Everything else is fine. How's shell? Everything else is everything's compiling. Perfect. Oops. All right. Oh, guessing we have some kind of an error here. 
So what happened? I probably misspelled something again or whatever. I don't know why, but developer tools sometimes take a while to load up. I think it's because I have a few extensions that hook into the developer tools. And maybe that's why I haven't had any issues in the past with that. So it's kind of weird. What's the issue? All right, let's go through this by ourselves real quick. Uh, we're importing fetch. We're checking if authentication works exists. Authentication UUID. The login is UUID first, API token second. Producers. Uh, hey, let's combine this. All right? They do the same thing. Cool. Oh, uh, there we go. Is there, what's there? It's almost like there's an infinite loop or something. What the hell? This is strange. We are displaying navigation. Navigation is getting exported correctly. We are returning everything correctly. So what's going on? The navigation is not showing up whatsoever. Class navigation, extends component. That's correct. We're getting React and Component. We're getting Connect. Login, Logout, Fetch Tasks. That's all correct. Ah. Hmm. Is something wrong with this stuff? Yeah, this stuff all looks correct as well. That is bizarre. And it's not failing, is it? Did I not save it, maybe? So I, sometimes I, I run stuff and I don't save it. No, it's all saved. 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 All right, something didn't go through. All right, so as you can see, we have empty tasks. We have a thing that says, hey, can you pass in your login information? Because we don't have it. Um, let's go ahead and just copy and paste this stuff. We get our tasks. Cool. So that works, right? Logout. What we should do probably um, for logout is we should handle logout somehow. So let's go to actions and upon logout, why don't we reset the authentication but also do tasks to be an empty array. Again, you can probably split, split this out into a second action or something and deal with that, but yeah, it's okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple things. We're going to get that authentication, we're going to reset that authentication, and then we're going to also reset tasks. So tasks is equal to action tasks. Cool. So that when you click log out, it resets the tasks to be empty. Now, that's done. Um, and let's open up our config. Uh, we're almost nearing the full hour of our little, um, what 
the pellet. Um, that crap of our video, and I haven't gotten to making middleware yet, so let's hur hurry up with that real quick. We fetch it, on logout, empty. Sweet! Alright, let's create our middle middleware. I'm gonna speed through this. It's not a difficult thing to do to create middleware. We're just gonna call it middleware. Is it? Middleware is gonna be an empty file right now. We're gonna zoom in. We're just gonna export the function. It's gonna be called uh, store authentication. We're going to have to get our state during that. Um, let's see, state is going to be state. Uh, like I said, there are a couple things that you get passed into store authentication. I think one of them is next, and the other one is... No, I don't remember. That's fine. We're going to do return. Uh, and what, what we saw in... Um, what do you call it in Redux Thunk? We're just gonna pass in a function that has next as a um, um, as a variable, uh, as an argument, an action as an argument. Let, let, we'll get the state in here. That makes more sense. Now, do a couple things that we might want to do. Uh, before we run the next action and after, when do we want to run it? When do we want to start authentication? I think beforehand we want to retrieve it. So, if state that authentication. We're gonna do one of these. There's no authentication. Or we should just really have a uh, boolean that says if we're authenticated or not. Uh, if the UID is zero, or state that. And you know what? We could have totally just rewritten this with a boolean. Um, UID API token is equal to zero. If all of these are equal to zero, we're gonna go ahead and just do local storage dot get item authentication, uh, and we're gonna stringify it. Mm, we can't affect the state. What am I thinking? We're gonna go ahead and just save the state. Oh God. Right. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be one of these. It's gonna be an and. It's bigger than zero. And. Yeah, we can even make it easier. We're gonna make this easier on ourselves. If action the type. And we're gonna go ahead and just get that type import login from actions. So as you can see, it's gonna start to it's gonna start to look a little bit like a uh, uh, reducer because we're you know getting the action type and we're doing specific logic based on that. Um, but um, We're actually doing the we're doing side effects, right? We're actually setting an item authentication. We're gonna JSON stringify state dot authentication. And if the action is log out. We're gonna do the same. Now what this will allow us to do. Uh, note that we're doing all of this after um, we pass that action along. We probably shouldn't. 
Let's do that beforehand. So we're gonna go ahead and store that information before the reducers get it. That's okay. Local storage is uh, an undeclared variable. That's okay. It's uh, it's part of the browser window. So, cool. Well, let's go ahead and apply it in. Where is the index.js? We're gonna go ahead and hook it up. Log in our authentication middleware. From dot middleware. And that's gonna go in here. Cool, so we're actually gonna be storing uh, our authentication information. Let's just double check that it works correctly. What's going on here? Middleware is not a function. Middleware is not a function. What the hell? Export function, st oops, store authentication. Oh, um, yeah. There we go. That should do it. Middleware is not a function. What the hell? Let's store authentication. All right, we'll, cut, we'll just rename it to authentication middleware. And what would be cool is being able to set the authentication. Well, what the, what the hell? Where is it? Getting that. It is a function. What the hell are you thinking? Create store. Oh, jeez. Did I misspell something again? That seems to be my issue these days. Authentication middleware. Authentication middleware. Wait, why does it say undeclared? Let's let's just do autocomplete on this so I don't mess it up. Cool. That is strange. Okay. I guess there was something misspelled. Um, we're not gonna go ahead and copy paste our tokens right now. What we're gonna go ahead and do is watch our local storage. As in not deleting it. This is from a different run, so let's go ahead and log in. And we're getting some issues. That's okay. Oh, okay, so since it basically we're unauthorized, the login information doesn't get stored. That's good to know. Um, we're not handling errors here, so that's okay too. Just don't worry about that. For the time being. We have to run it after. <laughs> uh, I just realized we have to run it after. The state has to get modified in order to, in order for us to be able to use it. Right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I was thinking about that, but that's okay. Anyways, so. Uh, we're going to enter our live working information. So that little error basically allowed us to uh, add a little bit of error handling. Kind of. Where if we can't successfully authenticate, we don't store the authentication information. Um, All right, log in. Authentication undefined, interesting. Did I access the wrong thing again? State that authentication. Authentication, what's going on here? Let's just console log out the state. Maybe I'm getting something wrong.
No errors. Still undefined. It doesn't get run. Why doesn't it get... Why does it not get run? Action.type is equal to login. Oh well, we don't need to... You know what? We don't need to uh, store. This. We don't need to get the state at all, to be honest here. We just use the action payload. Let's do that. I hope it works this time. Oh. All right. Yank that, yank that. Login. Network. All right, resources. Undefined. Man. What's going on here? I think it's one of those things where it hasn't actually compiled yet um, and I'm like refreshing too quickly that's probably what it is just like earlier where I was like why is the navigation not showing and it was just compiling slowly yeah I think that's what it is let's, let's look at shell Let's go ahead and just restart this. I apologize for these little hiccups. It's that's kind of what happens when you're just coding on screen and you don't have everything ready. Um, I do have a reference, but I'm still doing this kind of uh, ad hoc, I would say. We're starting scripts. That's what we want. Ah. This should work, right? Action the type. What do we have? A login action. Mm. No, right. We also have CSS and HTML tone. Action, action type, Google storage. We're not wanting to inhibit the flow of the action, we just want to capture its payload. So that's why we're doing it after the next. Oops. Save forever. Oops. There. Yeah, some of these reload times are 26 seconds. It's crazy to me. Alright. Well, after this, we'll be pretty much done for the time being. Or rather, actually, one more thing that we're going to have to do is um, retrieve that information. Um, where do we do the local storage thing, right? Uh, so we're gonna create a new action here. It's gonna be called export function get authentication. And this is gonna be an action that basically, in case there is authentication, uh, we're gonna go ahead and log in. So authentication is gonna be, we're gonna parse that local storage item, that item local storage, right? And we're gonna go ahead and return Our payload as well. Actually, let's return login. That makes more sense. And we're going to do, if it's undefined, we're just going to do um, empty object. probably restarted this several times. Oh, I'm scared to try this. <laughs> uh, with so many hiccups, 
It's just... It's getting a little bit uncomfortable. Alright, finally! Uh, so it, it gets stored here. Um, it gets stored in local storage, our API token UID. Upon logout, it gets stored as an empty. Oh, we, okay, that's cool. So where do we do run the get authentication? Why don't we just do it here? Component dit mount. We're gonna go ahead and get dispatch. Post this like perhaps. Um, that's misspelled it again. It doesn't make sense to do that. Um, if it's undefined, let's just do an or, and we'll do API token. UID. So if it's not present, we'll go ahead and just do that. Where am I? Component did mount dispatch. I'm gonna do get out. So on the component mounts. Let's we'll just go ahead and dispatch. Yeah. Hey, let's check local storage uh, in case there is uh, authentication information there. Ooh, we get an error. Ooh. Okay. Authentication is undefined. I misspelled something again. Oh my god. Jeez. No. Be patient. Right? Yeah, that looks right. Done. No errors. Cool. So, uh, let's go ahead and pass in our information. We'll test this out and. In. We're logged in. Refresh. We're logged out. What the hell? Okay, come on. Let's do this again. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to config. UUID, get the API token, and log in, login information stored, login information deleted. Hmm, why is that? It's probably something about here. Get item local storage. It is not get item local storage. So, you might have just seen a strange hiccup in the video. Um, it turns out I had a game update downloading to my uh, to the wrong drive and it took up like 50, 60 gigabytes that I had left over on that drive and so the video just kind of stopped recording. I'm gonna try to kind of stitch the two together as well as I could, as well as I can. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, man, now I have to open up a few things, but Okay, so the problem was in the end that I was getting the wrong item from the local storage. Uh, if you rewind the video back like 15 seconds or uh, already like a minute, um, you'll see that I was getting the item uh, local storage, not the item authentication. So let's go ahead and go back to this. Um, so that was the that was the issue, and. Uh, that was pretty much it. And then I was having, yeah, I, I saved you guys some trouble. I was having like 10 minutes of issues of just trying to figure out what was going wrong. And it turns out that the gulp process messed up. And the reason it messed up is because uh, um, I ran out of storage on the drive. I mean, 50, 60 gigabytes for a game update. Yeah, that's Star Citizen for you. Anyway, so as you can see, if you refresh, it works. 
we're going to go ahead and just look at what that looks like on our uh, in our resources. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, don't mind this top one. That's for from a different project. Uh, but you can see here on the bottom one, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, that we are storing all of our information. I'm going to go ahead and log out. And it's empty. So that works. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's kind of it for the video. So I'm sorry that I had to like add a two minute cutoff segment, which a minute of it is just me explaining what happened with the cutoff. But um, we have everything working. We have a middleware that stores our login information and deletes login information. Uh, when we log in and log out, that's wonderful. That means that we can use local storage to make this application work. Um, in the in the future, I hope to convert this application into an Electron app, which is when this is going to be a little bit more um, important. We also have an action that gets uh, that gets basically run on mount on component mount of navigation, which is this place, this little part here that allows us to log in. And if the authentication information is there, obviously we'd all fetch our tasks and do everything that we need to. If it's not, then we just have to log in. So all of that works. We have a featureful read-only client. So we do have add task and complete task actions, but as you can see, they're not asynchronous tasks. We would have to add extra fetches um, with, with extra checks for authentication. We'd probably change this into uh, a different kind of a thing where you know authentication would include an extra item that says that we're logged in. That would be good. Oh, excuse me. But I'm not going to do that with you guys because that's uh, it's simple and it's more of grunt work than anything else. So you can convert any of these into um, uh, into asynchronous action creators that allow you to actually contact the server and do whatever you need to do with that there. Now, um, in the original recording that didn't get saved, I did mention you can get on uh, my GitHub, uh, Angenis slash Redux Tutorial, and you'll see, you'll see a commit for Redux Tutorial Video 4, which will have the updated code. This will be my last video in the React Redux Tutorial uh, series, so just that's a heads up. I'm not going to be going over anything else. And I also wanted to mention that I am building a, uh, I'm building this application in more of a production style. Um, what am What am I trying to say? I am building this as a hobby side project uh, outside of the tutorial, which I would this hobby side project I was using as a, um, what, uh, as reference. So this is what it looks like. You know, we in this, this in this uh, tutorial, yeah, in this client, we can actually check out tasks, uh, add new tasks, finish Redux React tutorial series. Finally, we're gonna go ahead and add that. We can do a hard refresh of stuff, so that's kind of cool too. Uh, I'm still building out features for it, so that I, I just uh, I'm really happy about that. And you can see the code for that here on Angenis IHRPG Light Redux. You'll see that some things are a little bit different. Um, I have a, I don't have any error checking, he error checking here. The state is not authentication, but it's auth. <laughs> we have an update user authentication instead of login. You know, so things are a little bit different, but they're very similar. I think that it's a pretty cool place to look at for inspiration of what to, where to go next with this application. Um, as the bottom of this video says at all times, I do uh, Twitch streaming of a lot of uh, programming and a lot of other stuff. I have a blog. Uh, since you're on YouTube, you see my YouTube. I use the same setup to stream on Twitch, so it would be a very similar format with uh, Let's see, with uh, in this area of having a chat, so you'd see like what people are actually chatting to me. Anyways, thank you for watching very much. I appreciate any kind of feedback. Um, tweet me, leave a comment, email me, whatever you feel like. Thank you for watching again.